Okay, welcome to day two of trigonometry, and we are going to pick up where we left off. Yesterday we mastered making trig ratios, and today we're going to see how we can use those ratios. So our first objective is let's find the missing side length. Um, we're going to recall those ratios that we do know. So ratios having to do with this phrase or mnemonic device. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is the same thing as what we did yesterday, and that's going to be label the triangle. Notice big idea here is that I have a missing side and I'm trying to solve for. I cannot use Pythagorean theorem because I only know one side length. I do not know the second side length, um, but I do have this angle measure that I know. So similar concept in terms of what I'm given and what I'm trying to solve for to what we had with the special right triangles, but again, not a special right angle. We've got 26 degrees, so here's where I'm going to use the trig ratios that my calculator already has stored in it. If you don't have your calculator out, go ahead and get that out because we're going to need that in a second. And then I want you to pause the video and draw this on your paper. First thing I'm going to do is label my triangle with opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse opposite would be across the triangle from the 26 and then the adjacent is the side with x. Notice I didn't actually label the opposite because I'm not looking for it and I don't know it so it's not going to help me. By just labeling the two sides that I either know or I'm looking for, I've helped myself decide which trig function I'm going to use. So at this point I'm now making a decision of which trig function am I going to use and I'm looking at cosine. Why did I pick cosine? Because the two letters that I have on my picture are A and H, and those are the two with the trig with the trig ratio cosine. Notice that this sine has O and H, and tangent has O and A. So the combination of what you have will always match up with one of those two. I'm writing an equation. So yesterday we practiced writing ratios. Let's do that. Only difference is today, when I get this cosine here, instead of putting a letter for my angle like we did yesterday, um, we're going to go back to what we did really at the beginning of class yesterday. We said we were working with the angle 53 degrees, you may remember, and we did sine, cosine, and tangent. That was angle F. So cosine of an angle, you're always going to put an angle measure after your trig function is equal to, now you're going to make your ratio like we practiced doing yesterday, is equal to, I'm thinking to myself, it's equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, but I'm going to actually write the numbers that go with that. Adjacent being x and hypotenuse being 18. So that's my geometry. The geometry is really done at this point after you write your equation. Now I'm in algebra class. So think about if you're in algebra class, and I know this may look a little bit different than equations you saw in algebra class, but we have an equation right here. And my question to you is, how am I going to solve this equation? What does algebra tell me to do? And we're always focused on the x when we're in algebra class. We're trying to find for, solve for x. So to solve for x, I'm looking at the right side of the equation, and the right side of the equation says x over 18. But I know that when I have a fraction in math, that's really a division problem. So it's really x divided by 18. I want to undo division. So what's the inverse operation of division? And you should be thinking multiply right now. So I'm going to actually multiply by 18 on the right side. Here's why I do it. When I do that, this cancels out and I get x equals. But of course, if I multiply by 18 on the right side, I've got to multiply by 18 on the left side. So I now have x is equal to 18 times cosine 26. Still looks crazy, but you already solved for x, so you're done with the problem at this point. We just want a nice numerical answer. So we're going to go to our calculator, because remember our calculator has this number, that decimal, stored inside of it, because your calculator is really smart. Um, that number, cosine 26, think back to yesterday, that's that ratio that if you were to actually draw a triangle, measure it out to scale, with a right angle like we have right here, and a 26 degree angle, it doesn't matter what these two sides are, they're always going to be in the same ratio. So this side could be something else, but the ratio between those two sides is always a constant, like a 3 over 5 or a 4 over 5, or whatever it is, some decimal. That's what your calculator has inside of it. So go to your calculator, 
Notice that we're talking to our calculator in degrees today, so we're not going to um, go into radian mode. We're going to make sure, and I would double check right now, I can't show my calculator on the screen, so you're going to have to follow my instructions, but remember that by access accessing that mode button, you can double check and make sure you're in degree mode. Do that right now. Now I want you to go ahead and type in, just for the sake of knowing what that ratio is, just go ahead and type in cosine 26 and see what you get. If you are in degree mode, you should be getting something like 0.89879404.63, which I'm going to round to 8988, just so you can see what we're actually doing. Makes sense. Should be a decimal less than one, if I can make sense of that for you, because this is the adjacent over the hypotenuse is always the longest side. So that should always be a number slightly less than one. And I'm really doing 18 times that number. So you can go ahead and at this point type times 18 on your calculator, and you should be getting 16.1782928.3. I'm going to go ahead and round that to the nearest hundredths place is what I was told. So 16.178, the 8 tells me to round that up, so 16.18 is going to be my final answer here. Okay, just real quick before we leave this problem alone, let's go back here. And if you wanted to type that, I'm sorry, let's go back here. If you wanted to type that in your calculator in one shot, you can do that. Go ahead and try 18 times cosine 26 in your calculator and you're going to notice you get that same answer of 16.18. Okay, that's what I'm normally going to do. I showed you this step just so that you can see where we were getting, what that cosine 26 was really doing, what value it was. Okay, that's example one for solving for a missing side. Go ahead and view the next example. You're going to notice something slightly different when we get there. Okay, feel free to try it on your own. So this is example two, and I would go ahead and set it up. So noticing, notice that I'm labeling according to this angle again. I'm labeling my sides. Hypotenuse is my unknown side that doesn't have anything there. I'm leaving that one alone. And now I'm looking at my three ratios, which I remember by Sokotoa. And check out which one you're picking now. I've got opposite is my known, adjacent is my unknown. So we should be looking at TOA. Trig equation I'm going to write. Let's write it out. Tangent of my angle, 38 degrees, is equal to my opposite over adjacent is what I'm thinking right now. And I'm going to put the numbers in. So I've got 10 over x. Okay, just look at that for a second. You should notice a couple things different about that one than the first one. Um, obviously, I'm dealing with tangent instead of sine. Um, I'm sorry, cosine we had in this one. Not super worried about that. That just means I'm going to hit a different button on my calculator when I get to the calculator part. The big difference here is that this time my x is in the denominator. So when I go to algebra right now, because my geometry is really done, so I'm now in algebra class, I'm trying to figure out how do I solve for x when x is in the denominator. Common, common, common mistake is that we try to multiply by 10, because that's what we did in the other one. We multiplied by the number. And if you do that, just look at what you're going to get. You're going to get 10 times 10 is 100, and you still have an x right there. Nothing canceled out. Bad choice. So let's be creative, and let's figure out what could we do that would help us here. We really need to get x out of the denominator. Okay, so we have two options. A lot of people like to make this a proportion. Um, so I'm going to show you that if we do, actually I'm going to show you the other way and then I'll show you the proportion method. I'm going to show you that we need to get x out of the denominator. So let's try to multiply by x right now. And the only problem is you're not actually going to solve the problem, but by multiplying by x, your x's cancel out. Let's rewrite. So we now have x times tan. 38 is equal to 10. Remember, tan 38 is a decimal. If you're curious, type it in your calculator right now. And you're going to get a decimal for that. The ratio between the two sides, when we have a 38 degree angle, ratio between those two sides in the triangle, which is always a constant, because all right triangles with a 38 degree angle are similar. So, for all practical purposes, I have x times something equals 10. And now you're in algebra class thinking, oh, what do I do if I have 
my variable times some number. You want to undo multiplication, do the inverse operation of multiplication, and you should be thinking divide right now. So let's divide by tan 38. And again, if that freaks you out, write down the decimal, but it's really better to keep things accurate just to keep that and type it all in our calculator at once. That number, tan 38, cancels out on the left, and I end up with x equals, you're ready to go to your calculator. You've solved for x, go to your calculator, and type this in your calculator, 10 divided by tangent 38. Remember, we're talking to our calculator in degrees. You should already be in degree mode. And I'm getting an answer of 12, 0.799, and just to review our rounding, the nine, the third nine tells this nine to go up. So 12.80, because if I round the nine up, I'm at zero and I have to go up 2.80 would be my final answer. Notice I am including that zero to show that I'm rounding to the hundredths place versus otherwise it's gonna look like I'm rounding to the tenths place, okay? Real quick, another option for this problem, I'm going to go back to what we started with, tan 38 equals 10 over x. Some people get confused by that x in the denominator, so then I would say make it a proportion. You have a fraction on the right, make it a fraction on the left. Put it over 1. Any number can be over 1, it doesn't change its value. And then ask yourself, how do I solve a proportion? And hopefully you're saying, hey, I cross multiply. We did that all of chapter 7. So let's cross multiply right now. And if I cross multiply here, I'm going to get... tan 38 times x is equal to 10 times 1. And we're basically at the exact same point that we were at over here with this equation. We have a number times x. Tan 38 is a number. And then you would be saying, let's divide by that number. And you get x equals, again, tan 38. 10 divided by tan 38. Still going to come out with this value. Okay, just a different way of looking at it. Same exact math that we're doing. Okay, I'm going to shrink this down, and I want you to write down the following four problems. You're going to need to pause the video and draw these pictures on your page. I want you to try these four problems on your own, and we will check this when you get to class. So these four problems you're going to do, just be careful at looking whether your x is in the numerator or the denominator is my hint to you. One other quick comment that I want to make, hopefully you got those written down and you're going to solve. If we go back up to this problem, um, I did want to show you one other thing. So since we did such good work here, let's go ahead and recognize that, and maybe some of you were already thinking this, that if my angle in the lower left-hand corner is 38 degrees, my angle in the lower right-hand corner is going to have to be the complement, which would be 52 degrees. Could you have set up this problem in the following way? Could you have done tan 52 equals x over 10? Check that out. Okay, hopefully you're seeing I just relabeled it, and now this is my opposite and this is my adjacent if I'm going from this angle over here. Why would I do that? Well, if you look at your original equation, we had that x in the denominator that we didn't like, or we had to figure out how to deal with. And I think you could agree with me, it's actually easier if the x is in the numerator. So by switching it, now you won't be able to do this with sine and cosine, but with tangent you can. I turn it into a problem that I need to multiply by 10 instead of divide. Type that in your calculator, 10 times tan 52. Should be getting the exact same number that we got right here. Magic, right? So that's another way to do it. Um, to get the same answer is you could use the complementary angle. Okay? Okay, now do those four problems that I gave you.